I'm Nicholas Thompson. I'm the editor of NewYorker.com. So we invented a thing called Strongbox. And the idea of Strongbox is to create a secure way for sources, or for anybody, to communicate with us without there being any way of anybody being able to figure out where that person came from or how they reached out to us. So people can talk to journalists without having to risk their lives or we'll be able to get out documents, we'll be able to expose corruption, we'll be able to you know, be whistleblowers. So the way it works is this. I'm, I'm a source, I'm a person, or I'm somebody. I want to get information to the New Yorker. So I say, okay, I can log on through Tor. So Tor is an identity protection system. The document is PGP encrypted, so it's hard, even if somebody were to find it, to figure out what's in the document. Then it comes to us. We take it, and we take a little hard drive, and we plug it into uh, a computer, we put the document onto our hard drive where it's still encrypted. Then we go to a second computer. The second computer is not connected to the internet, and it doesn't have a hard drive itself. And we put in the little thumb drive, and then we finally decrypt it. So by the time we decrypt the document and see what it is, it's traveled securely, entirely encrypted, to something that has an air break from the internet, and you've been protected through Tor. Meanwhile, they also built a whole lot of code to protect the, protect the system, protect the integrity of it, and make it harder for people to hack in. But it means that if somebody were to come to us and say, hey, that document you have, we really want to find out where it came from, we would just say, we have no idea, and there's no way we could figure it out. The Strongbox is two things. One, it's a one-way channel. Somebody can send us a document, walk away. We'll have no way of ever finding them. We'll have no mechanism for finding them. But they also, if they want to engage, they can send us a message and say, hey, I want to hear back from you. And then we'll write back to them. We won't have a direct email address or anything. We'll just put a little message on a bulletin board. They, through a secret password that only they have, will be able to read it. So there will be some mechanism for two-way communication. Again, even if they engage in that, we won't have any way of figuring out who they are unless they tell us. We can say, look, our journalists will go to jail protecting your identity. We won't give up information that will reveal your identity. But still, the government has all kinds of powerful tools of coercion. The best thing we can say is, we couldn't even find you if we wanted to. So they can't get your information from us. Even if they put a you know, wet washcloth over my face and told me that you, you know, we need you to give up the source, I couldn't do it. We do know the identity of a lot of leakers. And there is something to be said for learning their identities. It makes it seem a little more real. We can understand where their passion came from. We can understand why they wanted to talk about these things. I edited stories by you know, Ryan Lizzle, political reporter, all kinds of secret documents that he acquired, that were given to him, that he found out. You know, there's a long, long history of um, investigative reporting here that has relied on documents. Jane Mary has used it a whole bunch in the exposure of abuses in the secret detainee program. There are a lot of reporters. Cy Hirsch absolutely has spoken all kinds of things throughout his career. So there are a number of people here who rely on secret documents, who rely on sources, who trust that their um, contributions will be kept anonymous, and this is another mechanism for communication. The system is open source. The code that went into it is entirely open source. Anybody else can build it. They have to download the code. They have to buy some old laptops. They have to buy some thumb drives. I mean, the desires of the people who built it was that you know, this would start at the New Yorker, but then it would spread places. So we're going to do what we can to continue to let people know that this is out there.